Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, run through the weather warnings we still have another thunderstorm warning issued for the rest of today as we have got quite a widespread risk through parts of the Midlands in towards northern England. That risk does extend into tomorrow as well but we don't have a warning issued for that yet. We'll have a look at the latest UKV, looking at all of that in detail. Also looking at the temperatures as it is fairly warm today and the next couple of days and that warmth is one of the main factors in the strength of the thunderstorms. And we'll also check out the Arome Run, which is another high resolution uh, model that did perform very well when we had those real severe thunderstorms last night. Um, that was remarkable and I'll speak about that again in a minute or two's time. And then we'll have a look at the longer range, look at the GFS, GM, East and OF and the ensembles, as it is continuing to look fairly warm as we head through early May. Not anything ridiculous, a few degrees above average most of the time, but that's a lot better than what we had the last couple of weeks of April. And there is some decent signs that we could be seeing something drier in around a week or so. It's time high pressure becoming more of a mainstay. We've got high pressure around at the moment, but because we've got low pressure nearby, it still allows showers and storms to break out, making it feel pretty unsettled. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can actually see the remnants of last night's thunderstorms still across parts of Southern Ireland. They are dissipating away now, really turning to nothing. But they were really severe last night. I can't, I can't say, stress that enough. They are some of the most severe thunderstorms I've seen actually in a few in the last few years, at least for my location in London. Um, they did, of course, come from France initially, uh, and they did start to die out a little bit. And then we saw this secondary band of thunderstorms form uh, across the London area, down towards the south coast, and that swept through uh, and giving uh, and gave about half an hour to an hour of some really intense rainfall uh, and some really quite horrible conditions. I actually was woken up around 4 a.m. due to the sound of hail and rain smashing onto the windows. And of course, looking outdoors, there were flashes of lightning pretty much every five seconds or so. So a real severe outbreak last night. Not massively widespread, was fairly localised towards the London area, southeast England, towards Essex. But regardless, some of the worst thunderstorms, at least this time of year, I've seen in a number of years was probably a little bit more intense than we initially anticipated uh, and thank god there was a warning in force or it would have been a pretty big flop as that warning really only came into force in the last 24 hours or so um be a pretty decent performance from the models uh, maybe even slightly underdoing it which is rare from the models they normally overdo thunderstorms but there is still the risk over the next couple of days as we'll see in a minute but we're not expecting them to be as severe Actually, at the moment, you can see a few showers across the Midlands, and this is where we've got another thunderstorm warning issued through the rest of today, and we are uh, forecasting more storms to break out, but we're not seeing them at the moment. They're not like the storms we saw last night, formed as a result of a disturbance, actual lower pressure, allowing uh, quite a widespread convection to take place. Storms we're expecting this afternoon to the evening are much more pop-up convective based where they do really explode into single celled systems perhaps merging together but we're not really seeing much evidence of it so far have a look at the window probably the main reason is the extensive cloud cover which is probably prohibiting that convection from getting going but these storms can prop up very very quickly and it's not too unusual for the models to get the timings of storms out so perhaps they are going to be arriving a little bit later on but at the moment, as we'll see from the short range drives in a minute, there is forecasting more thunderstorms through this afternoon and evening. We're just not seeing evidence of it yet. Now, if we put on the temperatures this afternoon, you can see really warm across parts of northern England, especially towards uh, the northwest here, up towards Liverpool. Um, I can imagine being on the coast here from sort of Southport, Formby, down all the way to Hoylake. This must be pretty stunning conditions uh, with loads of sunshine temperatures 
into the low 20s. So if you were looking for something, uh, to, if you were looking to go to this towards the seaside, it looks like these areas are looking pretty stunning today indeed. It is fairly localised, and the reason for that is the wind is coming from the east, so it's the areas further westwards, sheltered from the North Sea, that are warmest. And of course, this is where, uh, with the wind coming in from actually a slight southeasterly direction, this has actually got the furthest sea track from the North Sea, that wind coming in. And this is where the warmest air mass is. To the south, it's cooler, and it's that's why we saw the thunderstorms. It's on that dividing line, and that's why we're expecting more thunderstorms through the Midlands here, um, through the rest of today, again, on that dividing line. And it's the cloud to the south that's really holding those temperatures down. So we'll have to see over the coming hours. You can see the warmth that's there. We have got the instability around. The models are showing it. We're just not quite seeing it in reality at the moment. If we do put on the past 24 hour precipitation, uh, we'll be able to see the severe thunderstorms in the southeast. You can see these yellows forming. These are where the severe thunderstorms took off. And you can see where the cells were in individually placed. It did turn into a line of storms, but we these are where the storms initially popped off. And you see many areas around an inch of rain. Further westwards, down towards southwest England, we saw widespread inch to two inches of rain. And this is from a large convective system Longer spells of rain, not quite as torrential as the thunderstorms further eastwards. There were some flashes of lightning mixed in here, but it was more remnants of storms, uh, less active storms. So longer periods of rain, overall more periods of rain, but not as quite high precipitation rates. There weren't any hail, and there was le much less frequent lightning. But if we do, uh, I mean, you see further south as well, where the storms originated last night across much of northern France before moving in towards England. And you can see how the far southeast of Kent saw nothing. If slightly further inland where the storms initiated, you can see a lot more again showing you. Even when we've got quite widespread convection taking place in the southeast, it is still highly regional. Ro Royal Tunbridge Wells here seeing around an inch of rain. You go 10, 20 miles eastwards, seeing near to nothing. If you do look at the weather warnings now, you can see there is another thunderstorm warning issued for much of the Midlands towards eastern England, just to the north of London here. Until midnight tonight, thunderstorms developing during the afternoon and the evening lead to travel disruption. So this warning's been in force for about four hours as I'm recording this, but we've not really seen any take off yet. Said so could just be due to the fact of that cloud cover and it could initiate slightly a bit uh, slightly slower than we anticipated. While some areas will remain very uh, will remain dry, thunderstorms are likely to develop this afternoon and evening from the east and move relatively slowly westwards or northwestwards. And where those thunderstorms occur, heavy rain accompanied by frequent lightning is likely uh, with potential to uh, of around an inch of rain. And it could only fall in an hour or two. There could be as much as 50 millimetres and we could also see some hail, frequent lightning or the usual hazards. It is, of course, very low likelihood and medium impact. The same impact ranges as those storms last night. But I must say these storms that we could be seeing today don't look anywhere near as intense. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see the remnants of the storms last night clearing through. And the, actually, the latest uh, UKV, the 3 a.m. run, not doing those storms justice. That little line you can see to the east here towards London, that was a, a real big cluster of storms, a lot more intense at this point. This is when I woke up to the storms. Big cluster of storms here, uh, a lot more intense than this UKV run is showing. But as we head through the afternoon, you can see towards the middle of the afternoon, storms get going around 3 p.m. from the latest UKV and really start expanding around 4 and 5 p.m. But we've not seen any activity. You can see they don't look ridiculously intense, not too much in terms of reds in here. So potentially more heavy showers than severe thunderstorms compared to last night. But again, the models could be underdoing it. But we've not seen any initiation yet. So we'll have to see if these actually occur at all. But given the very strong signal here, I would be uh, would be a big model flop indeed if we saw absolutely nothing, which is pretty much what we're seeing at the moment, bar from those couple of odd showers. Through this evening, we could see some more thunderstorms moving into the far southeast before slowly dissipating away. And then as we head into the morning, into, into uh, the early morning to mid-morning tomorrow, we could see further thunderstorms for parts of East Anglia up towards northern England. Another line of storms could be developing there. I need to keep a very close eye on that because even though it doesn't look ridiculously intense right now, it could be a bit more intense in reality. And this hasn't really cropped up in the models in the last day or two, but we're now starting to see it. So it could be something that is increasing in strength as we get nearer to the event. 
through the rest of Friday behind those storms and with the remnants of, of those storms we just see further heavy rain as we start to see slightly cooler air pushing in. As we enter Saturday the remnants of that rain slowly clears north and westwards and we can see some showers further south and eastwards but this is combined with slightly cooler air they're less likely to be as intense. Into Sunday, we could see some more heavy rain, maybe even again some thundery rain mixing into this low, but this is more likely to just be persistent rain um, with a low pressure system there. You can see pretty organized rain spiraling around, but given the slow moving nature, again, could be seeing further thunderstorms develop within this, looking really lively indeed. And the reason for this is because we have got some warm air still feeding into it, but it's not ridiculously mild. Uh, the reason why it's turning cooler as well, as you can see again, some chillier air masses mixing in, but nothing particularly cold at all. And you can see it's the early part of next week, Monday through to Tuesday, still plenty of heavy, maybe thundery showers around before it does slowly start to trend drier as we head into the middle parts of next week. If you look at the max temperature you see this afternoon, four parts of the Midlands, Northern England, 20 to 21 degrees, especially that Northwest England area, Again, seeing around 22, 23 degrees reports today, but further southwards, only 10 to maybe 15 degrees while we're seeing thicker cloud. If we do progress into tomorrow, it could be again warm in places, especially across Scotland, 20 degrees, but we've got the rain and the remnants of storms. Again, maybe only double digits at best, so really chilly at the surface, even though the upper air temperatures are really quite warm. As we progress slowly into Saturday, it could actually be a pretty chilly night in places, but by the afternoon, we're again, looking at the low to maybe mid-teens as slightly fresh air moves in. And then into Sunday, again, chilly because of the rain and cloud mixing in. For as we head into Monday, starting to improve, and Tuesday likely to be a bit better with some more sunshine. So cooling off a little bit through the weekend and start of next week, but really only going back towards average, maybe slightly below average when we have some rain around. But as we'll see from the long range charts in a minute, the overall trend is for generally average to above average conditions to prevail. Now, after you finish by looking at the latest UKV, you can see those storms last night slowly clearing away. This is the 6 a.m. run. And you can see through the afternoon here, they do really invigorate uh, and take off around that 4 to 6 p.m. point. So maybe the Arome suggesting more around that 5, 6 p.m. point. So we'll have to see in the next hour or two, those really taking off before slowly clearing. And then we see further heavy rain and thunderstorms moving in from the east here. This is a lot more active than the UKV was showing not quite as severe as last night, but almost as severe, I must say, heading into Yorkshire there, looking really lively indeed, before slowly clearing westwards. Could be a pretty wild morning tomorrow from the looks of this. Could be really quite horrible day indeed with lots of heavy rain and more heavy thundery showers spiraling in off the North Sea. Quite an unusual wind direction to be seeing thunderstorms coming in for, especially for Yorkshire. It's normally a southerly or southwesterly wind can produce thunderstorms. Very rarely a flat easterly coming in, in off the North Sea. But that's what the Arome run is suggesting here. So we have to keep a very close eye on it. And again, the reason for this because we've got some slightly increased cape not quite as high as we saw earlier this morning you see this cape towards the london area early this morning you can see tomorrow is not quite as high but it is still high nonetheless or still pretty high for early may again summertime you can get up towards 1500 2000 uh, joules per kilogram in the uk maybe even a nudge higher in some heat waves but for May, this is pretty high levels of Cape indeed, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how this does play out. But again, the risk of more pretty severe thunderstorms through the rest of today and perhaps further northwards through the morning. If you do now have a look at the longer range, you can see why we're seeing these thunderstorms and warmer conditions because we're pulling in a warm easterly wind. Now, this upper air temperatures, this warm upper air temperatures isn't going to last forever and eventually runs out by the weekend and that's why it turns cooler. And then generally you can see low pressure is spiraling around for the early part of next week before high pressure builds in with the wind direction coming more from a southerly and it actually looks pretty decent all the way through to the middle part of May. Here though we start to see a bit more low pressure influence from the southwest which could bring fresher and more unsettled conditions, but until about day 10, we're warm and we're pretty dry indeed. So looking pretty positive out into the reliable time frame. Beyond that, perhaps a little bit more ropey.
If you compare finally to the GM in the East in the RF, you can see the GM here, again starting with East and winds, low pressure moves in, and then high pressure builds in and holds off all the way to day 10. Again, warm and dry, nothing hot, but warm and dry, as you can see again, up towards the high teens or touching 20 degrees, average to slightly above for average for the time of year. If you finish by looking at the east and the again, easterly winds at the moment, low pressure moving in into the early parts of next week. That's why precipitation is increasing. And then again, high pressure building in, maybe just about losing out at day 10. But at least in the short to medium term, it's pretty warm and it is pretty dry. Again, zooming into the United Kingdom, look, again, temperatures around the low 20s here towards uh, a week on Saturday. If you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you see this very warm at the moment, traveling back towards average for the weekend with high precipitation. That's why it's going to feel cool. And then slowly on a sort of flat to slight upwards trend to around average to above average throughout the next couple of weeks. Yes, some cooler ones, big skin there, but none of them look that cold and they don't have that much support. And you can see from around the 7th of May onwards, so around early next week onwards, pretty dry for a good four, five, six T period, maybe even longer than that. So definitely looking pretty positive no heat wave nothing spectacular but we could see a good persistent period of maybe four five six days of temperatures around 20 degrees and pretty dry conditions with high pressure building in pretty perfect in my opinion for this time of year tv's temperatures responding as well warm at the moment cooling down through the weekend just because of the rain and the cloud and the slightly fresher upper air temperatures and then generally on the upper strand back towards the high teens maybe even 20 degrees and finally if we compare to the ECMWF ensembles again very warm at the moment trending back towards average and then slowly above average uh, or around average for the foreseeable future and again that dry spell from around the 8th of May onwards. So looking pretty positive longer term, but we've got to get through the next few days where we've got continued areas of rain, slightly cooler conditions through the weekend, but for the next sort of 48 hours could be the risk of some more pretty hefty thunderstorms, and that risk is shifting northwards through tonight into tomorrow. You can't rule it out further southwards, but it does look like perhaps through the Midlands to through the rest of today, and maybe through the far north of England, towards of Yorkshire area, the northeast, through tomorrow morning, those areas could be the areas of interest for those storms. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.